We are following breaking news within the last hour. We have learned the suspect in Monday's mass shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, traveled to the Madison area after that and considered carrying out another attack there. Our Andrea Albers is live outside the Lake County Courthouse where that press conference wrapped up just a short while ago. Andrea, you were there for that press conference. What else are you learning this afternoon? Well, that press conference started with an announcement about the judge's decision to deny bail for Robert Cremo. That was something the prosecution had planned to ask for, and it came as no surprise. But the shocking part of this press conference came when investigators began taking questions, and it was revealed that Cremo was planning another attack, this time in Madison. Cremo drove there after the shooting at the Highland Park Independence Day Parade, and investigators say at the time, Cremo had 60 rounds of ammunition on him. Ultimately, he decided not to shoot. Investigators did develop some information that it appears when he drove to Madison, he was driving around. However, he did see a celebration that was occurring in Madison, uh, and he seriously contemplated using the firearm he had in his vehicle to commit another shooting. Um, in Madison. Do you know how much ammunition he had at that point? On the Approximately 60 rounds. Now there is no clear answer at this point as to why Cremo was in Madison or why he dumped his cell phone in nearby Middleton where it was discovered and then handed over to investigators. He eventually did return to Illinois where he was arrested and right now Cremo's motive for the Highland Park parade attack is still unknown. Investigators would not elaborate on what Cremo said when he was questioned by police, only said that he seemed to have an affinity for the numbers four and seven and the inverse of those numbers, which would be seven four, July 4th. Sergeant Chris Covelli did say that during police interviews, Cremo admitted to the shooting, something investigators say he had been planning for weeks. Reporting live outside the Lake County Courthouse, Andrea Elbers, TMJ4 News. Still a lot of questions, but disturbing answers so far. Thanks, Andrea. Well, the 21 year old faces seven counts of first degree murder and prosecutors say they intend to add more charges. But if convicted on the murder charges just alone, Cremo would be given a mandatory life sentence with no chance of parole. We are learning more about the victims of this tragedy. These now have faces. So among the seven victims, Take a look was Jackie Sundheim, her synagogue saying the former preschool teachers kindness and warmth touched them all. And Nicholas Toledo, a father of eight and grandfather of many, the 78 year old was described by relatives as a loving man who was creative, adventurous and funny. And the other victims, 64 year old Catherine Goldstein, 88 year old Stephen Strauss and 35 year old Dorita McCarthy and 37 year old Kevin McCarthy. The name of the seventh victim has not yet been released. But Arena and Kevin McCarthy leave behind a two year old boy named Aiden. This is a big story. A lot of people have been following. He was with his parents at that parade when they both were killed. A GoFundMe started by a family friend yesterday has raised more than $2 million. Arena Colon, who was related to the mother, who actually was a friend, I should say, shared this picture of the couple at their wedding in Chicago. Colin says that McCarthy's two year old son Aiden will now be cared by his family. And hey, if you would like to help out little Aiden, just scan that QR code right there on your screen. It will take you directly to the TMJ4.com website where we have a link to that GoFundMe page. New at noon now, though, with